Good afternoon. This is Dr. T. Tavo Diarcy with an apostolic leadership comment to ministry. You know, I really give, I really honor the really good quality talent, the faith, the teaching, the energy, the uh, really quality of most ministries. But when you get out there as a new visitor and you go to different states and you try to cross movements because God is leading you to study the body, to develop a teaching about cross-body unity, which is us, equal opportunity, real respect for the office of every human made in God's image, E-O-R-R, then this comes out that you got to note some things need assessing, some things need correcting, and some things need directing to another more back to the Bible organic first church cause. So if we want to take in stock the overview, you know, the Bible did warn us, Paul mentored all of us, and he said, a warning for the last days, and we're right here, perilous times will come. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. I would also add First Timothy 6, 5. Now the devaluing of real people who are not famous who are not maybe white or charismatic or Levitical patriarchism or astute or the bone structure or the gender or the politics or the vibe, the vibe that is in your move, your pet move that you're an expert in, you move in, you live in, you breathe in. This is what we're teaching. It needs to be broken down because the lack of respect the awesome talent, the awesome gift, the often media and presentation and by the book performance, all right, is not the same as holy fear of the Lord at the grassroots. Humility, interested in somebody else's opinion, not typecasting, not stereotyping, not demeaning, not having misogynist because of evil eye, no witchcraft, occult, psychic reading. This is what we're talking about. Now, along the way, I got this bold because I matured. I went, I didn't realize it was occult now. I just didn't realize. With From the late 90s on, after I saw in the body of Christ in Richmond, <clears throat> which is not like that then, well, I had a taste. The LP were there. <laughs> but we'll go with that another day. All right, it wasn't like this. So it wasn't Big Boss. But the issue is that in the 90s, in 1996, the Lord had called me in 76, 20 years before, to study the body. I had my own ministry. I had, you know, it's cross-body unity in, in action and in preference from the beginning. Nobody targeted me. Then we noticed the the more famous moves, the TV ministry, and then the wannabeism, the junior ministry wannabeism. Maybe you call me a junior minister, but I came from knowledge and great Bible teaching background, and then faith and patience, as well as just Billy Graham type on up. Nobody knows it all. I wasn't anybody. I was just like an anonymous person. Also finding my way, feeling very insecure once I got to the care, you know, the spirit filled, because that was never how I was brought up. And you want to make sure you're not off, you're not chasing the wrong thing, or you're not after any false motives. But I did see out in the field when the charismatic move came, and I was one for a while, um, I could see a difference in how people who were not raised, I guess, well, maybe were raised dysfunctional, they were the first person in their family that met the Lord and got on fire and was, you know, called to an office ministry. Nothing different. That's just a different backstory. They're equal. Nothing. Nobody has a choice in their upbringing. So I was valued. I was respected. No bias, you know. So I have a perspective of education and low-key servant leader good quality. And my esteem, by God's mercy, is not in my, you know, call or ministry or my look or my race. It really is. But I'm just giving as an example to stir it up. All right. Now, when I can see the difference in people saying, you know, I can do this for my career. That's different from being called, you know. You meet people of all styles. So there was dysfunction there to, at the beginning, right at it, but not really because people were, you know, were all young, growing, and immature, pure-hearted. See, the pure-hearted factor was people still clung to the cross. You could still hear that. All right, nowadays, after 70, 96, 
Charisma magazine. I happened to pick up a copy somewhere. In the back had a warning, a prophetic warning by Brother Bob Buis. And it was a mini book. It said, A Warning to the Church in America. The spirit of entertainment and fantasy is going to try to attack. And it has. And that is what we see now with this, you know, a lot of more of the. Plus, it grew giant and mega and cosmop. I've been in cosmopolitan. I've been tiny churches, black churches, Vietnamese churches. Because that was called over 40, almost 50 years. Hey, I liked it. But I never got targeted. I never knew I was going to be targeted. I never suspected a person and going to a conference, a ministry that says it's Christian, would have people ready to target a visitor by type, by their energy. They could have talked to me. So this is what we started to find in the the giant you know, the giant expansion of conferences and mega and micro but also the wannabeism the good old boyism the cults that grew the cult protecting i i guess i trigger i didn't know it but baptists you don't think like this but charismatics do or did the cult spirit like turf protecting that is a giant thing and i remember all these you know the details great things that deliverance ministry came in there was like vineyard servant leader word of faith before it got prosperity movement it's a different love you know people have different flows and so they were cheerful and happy i remember word of faith when back then and no shepherding till later in something not the top ones it's the bottom ones where i would meet them you know so i remember the um deliverance ministry came through and i tried that of course i picked you know you're picking good and not then i realized no they never stop looking for devils they're never really happy and i'm happier than they because i don't look for devil. i know the faith movement i know the baptist you know i know the word of god so i believe that this evil eye and the tongue talkers these you know looking for devils witches and witch lists and accusing strangers is my big bailiwick my big moment to teach on it is due to false teaching along the way, in, in, you know, just lack of knowledge, not educated in certain, in Mountain William School of Theology, but also impure. Something is not right if I, who have not done anything, can trigger false teaching by type, by look, by vibe, as a mother in Christ, as a sister in Christ. They can't tell a difference in these prophets from a peer, from an Elijah call with the move, who's not a whelp or under them from a Jezebel or a witch. Or I don't want to, I don't want to talk like that. I don't, that's dysfunctional to think like that, but it is giant masses of mega and their people, their fruit that I would meet throughout the nation. White, solid white cosmopolitan in this. I didn't realize charismatic own, they think they own the Holy Spirit book of Acts. And you know what? A lot of people besides them, black and white are not in shepherding and they don't have that goal to be over. They don't teach submission that strictly. I mean, there's chain of command. I believe in it. They got to know all that, you know, it ties in with Levitical patriarchism, shepherding. Uh, you want to be over, you want to be, you know, make sure you're in order. And I trigger it. So no, I watch. And I'm going to teach on on this. When I am noted as a prophet seer by grace, I know when I'm being witch watched. And I know if they're speaking. So when I get that spirit, you know, the Lord cautions me as a protection that I'm being defiled. I'm being diagnosed by their pop psychology or usually the witchcraft, a psychic, occult reading me, trying to determine my evil, my thirst. God forbid. All right. I take it in stride. Because I know I'm there for a reason to study them back and see how they treat people with respect them, disrespect. What do they do? This is why we're teaching passionately about dysfunction in our nation. The the country gentrified, gone, whelp, Western European Levitical patriarchism at the grassroots, following usually the famous person. And then I wondered, are they true prophets or not at this point? Are they true prophets, though, that read people, will not speak, have never confronted me? And even though I'm really choosing to, you know, God wants me to stir it up for the nation, it's because people that they, they pick on people when they're down and grieving and.